Hello everyone and welcome back to the Rossi Bespoke YouTube channel. Now today I've got a really simple um, demonstration for you today because we're laying a breakfast table. So if you've already watched the video on how to lay a dining table, then you're going to have a good idea on how to lay a breakfast table because it's very, very similar. There are a few subtle differences, so I thought it was definitely worth showing you a couple of the little quirks of the English style of laying a breakfast table. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much. Now, traditionally, you don't actually put a tablecloth on a breakfast table. That's reserved for a dinner table. But of course you can if you'd like to. And I have here because I think it shows off the cutlery a lot better. So it makes it easier for you to see. If you are using a tablecloth, please make sure it's beautifully clean and beautifully ironed. You don't want to see a creased tablecloth. Firstly, I'm just putting the cutlery down in roughly the right position. And then I'm going to measure my place setting because I know exactly how wide my breakfast plate is. You can use your butler stick to get the central point and ensure the cutlery is the correct distance apart. Now, as what you can see here, I have a patterned tablecloth. We also need to make sure it's lined up with that. So the center of the pattern must also correspond to the center of the place setting. So that's what I'm doing here, just measuring it to get it in the right place. Now, of course, we must straighten our cutlery. Now, there's a time-honored dispute when it comes to putting cutlery onto a round table. And that's, does one align the cutlery to the edge of the table, or does one put the cutlery in a straight line? Now, there's not really a right or wrong answer to this. You just have to do what looks best on your table, and what you like best, which is of course, it, or what your client likes best, which is the most important factor. We always use the thumb's width as the guide. So a thumb's width from the edge of the table, which is approximately one inch, depending of course on the size of your thumb. And then the side plate will be the same distance from the edge of the table. Make sure as always that none of the cutlery is too close together. I'm using willow pattern china for this table. I think a highly patterned china is perfect for a breakfast because you're usually putting down an empty plate. The rule is that a gentleman is never served breakfast, he always helps himself. I think it's fine to use an eclectic collection of willow pattern. Next we have our napkin. Now the napkin never goes in the center of the place setting for a breakfast, it always goes on the side plate. It also is never folded in an ornamental fold, always a flat fold for breakfast. But that's quite important because some people get quite touchy about that. Now we need to think about what else needs to go on our breakfast table. Do we want marmalade, jam, honey, whatever other accoutrement will enhance the breakfast which you're serving and your guests will enjoy. Milk, sugar, these are all things you'll have to remember when you're laying your breakfast table. The positioning of the cup, saucer and glass is important because it depends whether your guests are going to be helping themselves or whether you are going to be serving them as to where you position it in front of the guest. You will notice that I put down two knives, a fork and a spoon. The spoon is of course for the cereal, the, there is a knife and fork for the cooked breakfast and the additional knife is for the toast and butter. People normally put both knives to the right hand side for a cooked breakfast, as opposed to above or on the side plate. This can differ from different places. And of course, always remember your salts and peppers and whichever cruet set that you wish to use. I personally like to have salt that one can pinch into the top of the egg rather than having a salt shaker. 
As I mentioned before, it's very important that the place setting is the correct size for the plate that you're using. This is an 8 inch plate. It's also very important that the pattern is the correct way up on the plate, the cup, the saucer and the side plate. I will just show the measurements to make sure that everything's lined up and correctly placed on the setting. Once you've done one setting perfectly, you can then use those measurements to ensure that every setting, whether you're doing 10 or 1000, is exactly the same size. I will now demonstrate the alternative way of lining up the cutlery. So rather than being lined up to the edge of the table, it's all in a straight line. Here I'm using my butler's rule to demonstrate. There's my center point and all the cutlery goes straight across and you can simply bring it down to meet the edge of the butler's rule as you would if you were using a straight edged table. Now this can look very neat or sometimes it just looks wrong. So you really do need to just experiment and see what looks best depending on the shape and size of your table. As you'll see with this small table, it just looks wrong. It doesn't work. So we need to go back to having it following the shape of the edge of the table. So I bring the plate down and then take my cutlery back down to one inch from the edge of the table as it was before. Yes, personally, I think that looks much better and much neater. So as I was explaining to you, where you put the cup and saucer depends on if it'll be you or the guests serving themselves, because you do not want to put the teapot across their place setting when they're trying to eat. So you might only fill the orange juice glass once at the beginning, but the tea you will have to fill up many times during breakfast, so therefore you want it to the far right of the guest. So that's how to lay a breakfast table. Thanks very much and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.